you know, fellas, if Tracy does find out and she does get here, I wonder if Amphibia would have an opening for a bookstore slash radio host who likes to read fanfics on the air. I mean, it's either that or I go to Owl House and go to the Boiling Isles. My last choice is going to a certain hotel and making a deal. I'm sorry, did somebody say making a deal? Um, remember, I've got a slot waiting right for you, just down the hall. No, 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 Alistair, down, 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 I did not ask for you. Okay, just remember, I'm only a phone call away. Pew. Why is it that when I said I can make a deal, I don't get Charlie or Vaggy? Hell, I would love to have Carmilla. Ah... <sighs> My dear, sweet Carmilla. Just 19, uh, complications, part 2, Twilight! Moving on! Twilight was pleasantly surprised to see that the whole place was well lit by the hundreds of bright candles adoring the great circular walls that surrounded them. The mechanism driving them left brought close to the wall and guided it down and it spirals around the edge of the gargantuan chamber towards the thousand floor, distant floor below. It was a slow, steady ride, and so I didn't care to look over the edge, knowing how high up they were. So, besides staring blankly ahead, she also found little to occupy herself other than the stallion standing next to her. She glanced over him, and looked attentively back. There was a pregnant pause. You tripped on purpose, didn't you? said Twilight. Flair was silent for a moment, as if giving her a second chance to think about it. Then the moment passed, his lips curled into a wide smile. If I did, it was only because you deserved the victory, he said quietly. Twice years drew to Lil. Oh, don't delude yourself into thinking I let you win, Flair continued. From the moment I fell off that rip, you were the clear victor. I didn't know whether I would have fallen or not, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway. For all the time I lost, if you hadn't stopped to help me up. Yeah, I guessed, muttered Twilight, though her frown didn't leave her. Speaking of which, I wanted to tell you how grateful I am that you did stop. Flair continued, losing like that would have been terribly embarrassing. Thanks to you, I got the chance to finish gracefully, at least. Twilight shook her head dismissively, but she couldn't stop a tiny smile. You're welcome, but really, I couldn't just leave you there. I'd feel terrible if I did. Not everybody can boast that, said Flair. He grunted his smirk and thought for a moment. Hmm, I wonder if Trixie would have done the same in your place. I doubt it, she smiled so brightly, but I'm not Trixie. Flair nodded, still smirking to himself. No, you're not. Their experience in silence fell between them, as if the mention of Trixie's name was doomed to prompt some kind of question from Twilight. She was reminded of the talk they had the other day when the showmare had told the story of her past with Flair. So he was reminded of the feeling that Tracy was holding something back from her, hiding some piece like the puzzle. It probably wasn't important, if it was anything at all, but Gary got, got the best of the Elijah Unicorn in that moment. So he turned to regard the stallion with questioning eyes. Flair, Twice said, What happened between you and Trixie to make her you know? Hey, Tamir. Flair finished her far. Your guess is as good as mine. We didn't part on best of terms. But it was nothing like this. He let out a loud breath. It has been years, though, and I suppose time has a habit of warping away we feel my memories, for better or worse. Twilight so noted slowly. For the worst in Trixie's case, I think I know the feeling. Flair raised an eyebrow. Really? Well, she seems to have warmed up to you, at least. Mind letting me in on your secret? There's no secret, said Twilight, shaking her head. It was really just a matter of time, I guess. We just, I don't know. It just happened. As we spent more time together, not just he made it easy for me. A gentle laugh escaped Flair. Yes, I could believe that. She's always been strong-willed. Twilight smiled and nodded as some of the memories started to come back to her. The talk she had with Trixie in the hospital tent... The dumbstruck look on the showmare's face when Twilight turned, turned her cape. 
Really like to let Twilight help with her therapy. For all the troubles she had been given since Trixie came back to Pineville, Twilight knew that she would do it again in a heartbeat. Twilight Sparkle, said Flair thoughtfully. I wonder if you'd be able to help me with something. Mm -hmm. Twilight grunted, trying to give him an intense smile. Flair himself wasn't looking back at her, but staring out over the edge of the lift. You must understand, he began. Despite our rivalry, Trixie and I have always been close. I still do care about her dearly. Oh, is that so? said Twilight, her smile unconsciously failing. It seems like everything I say serves only to annoy her, Flair continued. It would mean a great deal to me to regain her trust and companionship. But I fear she may be too blinded by her bias to give me a chance. Twilight called as he turned to give her a meaningful look. So you want me to help you? Oh, that's some I'm not sure. Don't feel obligated, said Flair coolly. You owe me nothing. If you are helping to help, then I'll am incredibly grateful in your debt. If not, no matter. I'll find another way to regain my sister's trust. In other case. Wait, said Twilight, finding yourself refocused on the instant. Wait, what he did he does say? Flair showed his mouth and raised his eyebrows. Twilight gave a quick shake of a away of palsy. I'm sorry, but did you say sister? I did. You guys. You all knew this was coming. You all who've read this story before. You knew that this guy was actually Trixie's brother when I was making comments about her, him being her father. You let me have egg on my face. Did those of you who have read this story before and knew this before I got to here? I'll remember that. I'm going to remember this. But still, I do have one thing to say to you, Flair. Ahem. <clears throat> yes. Oh, uh, you are? I'm Chekka Monarch. And allow me to tell you one thing. The universe... Has room in here for only one evil Trixie sibling. And that is me, and only me. So, Flair, you have an entire fic to wake up next to me in terms of how awesome and evil a Trixie sibling could be. Understand? I understand completely. Farewell. I did, said Flair. You sound surprised. He paused for a moment to give her a searching look. Then he made a comprehended sort of noise. Ah, uh, I see. Trixie forgot to mention we were her siblings. What? Trixie is your sister? Twilight almost shied. But you, that's not, I thought. She stammered wordlessly as her might were to overdrive. After a moment, her eyes widened in realization. Oh my, she's your sister. Flair chuckled. <laughs> It's not that surprising, is it? You can see the resemblance. Twilight so just a quick look over him. His color intensity always reminded her of Trixie's. Only it was green instead of blue. Now as he thought about it, behind the striking power of Flair's eyes was a fake sort of familiarity. She shook her head. Now that you mention it, but it's still a shock. I mean, for the way Trixie talked about you, I always assumed that you two were... She so hesitated with her mouth part open. It took a moment to think about it. Growing up together, sharing dreams, the closeness, the rivalry, it made sense. But I don't understand, said Twilight. Why wouldn't Trixie tell me? Because Trixie has more evil family members than I could shake a stick at. She didn't want to tell you because almost everybody saw this coming. Claire shrugged. If she truly hates me as much as she seems to, that she's probably ashamed or embarrassed. Twilight stayed silent. It all fit, didn't it? So he was trying not to think too hard about Trixie and Flair's relationship. It was in the past, after all. But hearing they were close, it always made her feel kind of funny. So he never even considered that it could be the brother and sister kind of close. My big brother was rival forever! The thought brought a tiny, impulsive smile to her lips. It was confused her far less than it probably should have. Does that make a difference to your decision, then? Said Flair, breaking the silence. That we're siblings. 
Will you help me? Tai looked at him, taken away from her reverie. She wasn't smirking or smiling. Yes, it was quite genuine. All he wanted to do was make amends with Trixie, his sister. Then surely there was no harm in helping him. Trixie might even appreciate it in the long run. You'll be sorry! I'll think about it, said Twilight with a decided smile. Flare nine, that's all I ask. Thank you. And while I'm moving on to the next paragraph, I'd like to say... Dear Pony POV, congratulations. You have won the Kivat Award for not having an evil Trixie family member in your story. That is such a rarity. Actually, now that I think about it, you and the Luniverse are the only two I can remember where Trixie's family isn't evil, antagonistic, or is against Trixie in some way or form. My god! Why does Trixie's family tree hate her? What do you mean? Trixie's family tree hates her. Ah! Pew! Oh god! I just sent her to a random dimension. I didn't mean to, guys. I honestly didn't. I I didn't know. I was shocked. I panicked. Ugh. What do I even have this thing set to? Oh, let's see. No, no. Let's see. Last coordinate set for... Oh. Well. Hey. The Boiling Isles has a nice magic school. Trixie will be fine. I'll guarantee you she's gonna come back in a few chapters and laugh about this. I'm laughing right now. And so are you folks. <laughs> the lift touched down at last. And Twilight was all too happy to step down onto the solid floor again. The chamber in which they found themselves reminded her very much of the other waiting room in its medieval atmosphere with the impressively powerful candles causing a dim, rustic light all around. It felt a lot larger, though, especially since the ceiling stretched all the way up to the very top of the pillar. In the center of the room was a long table, adorned with a federal feast of food and drink. Fruits, salads, pies, several types of different bread. Dolly wasn't particularly hungry, but the sight of so much delicious food was enough to convince her to help anyway. Behind them, the lift jerked upwards and started spiraling up back up towards the roof, Probably so that I was ready to bring down the next pair. Twilight spared her a brief glance before turning her eyes back to the table. She so approached it and walked down its length, idly taking in the details. Impressive, Flair commented, following her. I suppose we're in for the long wait, if they went to all this trouble. Twilight offered a grunt and a nod. I think I'd rather be out in the stands, though, she said, watching the others, I mean. As would I said Flair. But I suppose it would be rather awkward for them to get us down from the pillar, across the arena, and up to our box before the next pair could begin. I suppose so, Twilight granted, coming to a stop next to a large salad bowl. Flair walked around the other side and took the place opposite her, magically pulling a bowl of grapes over to himself and flashy Twilight a smile. The two of them fell into a silence, not quite uncomfortable, but not quite comfortable either. Twilight couldn't really think of anything she wanted to say, besides some comments about the weather, which she opted to keep to herself. So she settled for picking out her salad, and idly wondering what to make of the looks Flair kept throwing at her. Uh oh. From there, there was nothing a little more to do than wait. It wasn't all that long before the lift came down again, carrying Earth Twister and Nightshade with it. The atmosphere in the room certainly livened up once the victorious Earth Twister got to talking about how awesome the event was, describing the whole thing in remarkably unnecessary detail, while stuffing himself with as much food as he could get his hose on. Desert Rose and Bay Dazzer arrived next, the former taking a seat beside Flair, while Stellar found his place next to Nightshade. When asked who won, Bay Dazzer nodded Rose, but said nothing. Twilight thought that he might have been upset, but promptly changed her mind when she saw the frown he always seemed to wear, over the smile, as he pulled three separate bowls towards him. The fourth pair to arrive was Sandstorm and Violet, each of whom took seats by their respective partners. Sandstorm and Twister quickly became engulfed into their own conversation, 
and naturally they sounded very pleased when they both emerged victorious from their challenges. At this point, Twilight's mind was heavily focused on Trixie, so he'd been thinking about her ever since Twister and Nightshade had arrived. But now those thoughts were prominent. After Twister's story, she found herself very eager to see how Trixie could handle the pillar climb, disappointing she couldn't get the chance. An idea sprang to mind as she was pouring herself a glass of wire. She stared at the liquid in her cup for a moment, before letting the thought take shape, before lying, lying up her horn and reaching for the wire jug. She lifted the wire out of there, where it formed a swirling spear. Several pairs of eyes turned to Watts with interest, but Twilight didn't pay any mind. She pictured one of the giant wire screens outside, and the unicorn who challenged it, trying to mimic the spell as best she could. The water bent into a flat rectangle shape quickly enough, but the important part of the spell was not so easy. She tried to imagine a bird's eye view of the stadium, but all that appeared on the screen were a few colored lights. She knew that there were magical cameras recording, recording images for the screens, while she wasn't sure how to look and lock onto them without anything to go by. After a moment of struggling shifting her magic, Flair spoke up. May I? He said simply. Twilight blinked doubly at him. I'm sure. The blue eyed stallion smiled up and lit his horn, reaching out across his magic with Twilight's. Their auras touched, and Twilight had to stifle a sharp breath as an electric tingle ran through her horn. He didn't try to wrench the spell from her. It was more like he was gently guiding her magic along with his, as if holding her hoof and showing her through the motions. He answered her focus outwards and helped her to make sense of the presence he felt. There were several cameras at different angles around the stadium. Apparently, they were easy to find after all, if one knew how to look. She reached out and touched one of those that were moving, and immediately an image began to take shape on the screen before her. Well, way to go, you two. Twister commented through a mouthful of apple pie. Why didn't you do that before? I didn't think to, Twilight muttered distractedly. Looking past the screen at Flair, who was giving her that look again. What's he staring at? She wondered. Why has he let go? Did it spell stable? As a sense of her thought, Flair softly released his magical grasp, and the glow from his horn faded away. For a split second, Twilight regretted the thought, since he was overcome by a brief but definite sense of cold and loneliness. It was only a split second, though, as he felt rather sinewy as soon as it passed. She shook herself. The image on the screen zoomed in on a pair of unicorns dashing on the ramp, and Twilight quickly turned it so that every pony could see. The two competitors were only about a quarter of the way up, so Twilight hadn't missed too much. Her heart gave a jump as she saw that Trixie was in the lead, though Cherry Blossom was falling close behind. There was no sound, of course, but Twilight could imagine the tears and shouts of the crowd, postulated by the announcer's voiceover as the two of them galled at the pier and magic their way past the obstacles. Some of the traps they faced were completely different to those that Twilight and Flair had to go through. The Twilight started, or gasped, every time Tracy trapped one. To the form, though, the showman made a fantastic performance and through each one by the skin of her teeth. A massive cloud of midgets ambushed her about to turn the way up, throwing her off balance. She startled them back with a flash of light. They let out a whirl of fireworks to disperse the swarm. A few checkpoints later, her section of the ramp tripped to one side, sending her sliding towards the edge as it had done Twilight. Thank you, fast showmare, so it up a rope and maxed it towards the pillar, wrapping it around it was a giant light fixture and using it to pull herself up. Twilight found herself very tense as she watched, silently willing her partner onwards and upwards. Come on, Trixie, you could do it! She knew it was silly, but part of her hope that her thoughts would somehow reach the edge of her mare and spur her on. The all her attention focused on Trixie. Twilight didn't spare so much as a glance for her opponent, uh, ear, nor an ear for her twisters for any commentary. They weren't important anyway. Trissy passed the 20th checkpoint with a few seconds lead on Cherry. Things were looking good, at least until she ran into the next trap. Some kind of stretchy crevasse opened up on the wall just ahead of Trixie, but she didn't see it time to act. She caught right in the middle of a wave of water that burst from the gap. It was like the final trap that Twilight and Flare face. That this cursor flowed straight over her head and the other ramp, rather than right down it. Tracy staggered, barely managing to regain her balance under a force of wire that ran higher than her knees. And as he seemed to be struggling just to keep from being taken by the current. Twice's whole body seemed to tense up in anxiety as he led closer to the screen. Come on, Trixie! She muttered under her breath. As he were in that position, she could use a water parting spell like Flares. But Trixie probably didn't even know that spell. There had to be something else she could try. 
Just hold on, replied Wilder. You'll think of something? Tixie's horn lit up at last, but nothing seemed to happen. Her rear hoof slipped. She stumbled backwards, but managed to cast herself about a host distance from the edge. The camera zoomed in as she bared her teeth and focused her magic again. This time she got a purple glow over the water surrounding her. It was hard to say for sure, but from what Twilight could tell, it seemed that Tracy's spell had slowed down the current of water. With obvious effort, the show mayor managed to step forward, then another. Twilight's lips curled into a grin as her partner seemed to be making progress, but it was short-lived. A second crevasse opened up about the first, and more water spilled from it, sending a tidal wave towards Trixie. She was quick enough to reach out with a telekinesis spell to stop it, but the strain took her obviously in her stance. The threatening wave grew larger and larger, and her attempts to hold it back were ultimately in vain. Her spell failed. Her host slipped into the water came crashing onto her. Trixie was thrown into the pillar. No! Twilight cried, leaning forward so viciously, she bumped her chest on the table. Her first instinct was to teleport out there and catch her. But the spell was only halfway cast when Trixie's fall began to slow down. Twilight stayed her magic and watched with wide eyes as Trixie started to float steadily down towards the arena floor, curled up with her legs hugging her body. Her eyes scrunched up tight. Since her horn wasn't glowing, this had to be one of the arena's safety spells. Twilight landed a mute breath of relief. As Trixie neared the ground, her body twisted in midair so she could land on all four hooves. She touched down, and a moment passed before she opened her eyes and glanced around slowly, looking bemused. The image slowly faded out into nothingness, leaving a blank screen of water hovering in midair above the refreshment table. Obviously, this confirmed that Trixie was out and running. The screens outside would probably switch now, showing Terry Blossom from another camera's perspective. But Twilight wasn't particularly interested in watching her, nor apparently were the others, since he made no objection when she let the wire drop back into the jug. A strange sort of silence hung in the air. Twilight glanced around the others. Earth Twister and Sandstorm had their lips pursed and were purposely keeping their eyes locked on the table. Violet was hiding behind Bay Dasher and Night's Aid, who were still eating, as if he hadn't even been watching. Desert Rose had her eyes closed and was cuddling up the flare, only one that offered Twilight a sympathetic smile. Twilight herself wasn't sure what to think. Trixie had lost. She couldn't imagine how the showmare could be feeling right now. And to lose like that, not even having a chance to finish the race, must have made it worse. What do I say to her? Twilight wondered, staring to her cell pole. I could tell her that it doesn't matter since I won against Flair, and that she still leave us ahead statistically. That'll help, right? There came a distant thunder from overhead, signaling the start to lose the scent. Presumably, that Cherry Blossom had finished the race and was on her way down, but where was Trixie? Yeah, where was Trixie? Oh, uh, hey, Starlight! Hi, Legendbringer. Um, Trixie was in here just a few seconds ago, wasn't she? Maybe! Because she told me that she had some things she needed to pick up from the studio before we continued on our little adventure. Uh, speaking with Starlight, how was the giant monster? Oh, it was fantastic. Oh, it was glorious. It was probably one of the best things we've ever done together. Oh... We've really got to tell you more about it, but, um, where did you put Trixie? Uh, why well, was it exciting? Oh, I picked up an R slave and used it to fight the giant monster while Trixie proceeded to lose it. We've really got to tell you about it. Oh, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, Trixie was feeling so <laughs> exhausted that, um, she, your eyes are doing that thing. What thing? The pinball thing. What pinball? What ping, pinball thing? You know the pinball thing your eyes do whenever you're trying to come up with a good lie. I'm not coming up with a good. Well, I'm okay, Starlight. You're right. I am coming up with a lie. I thought so. Just be honest. Tracy didn't want me to tell you this, but the next part of your friend anniversary is a free trip to the boiling, boiling aisles. You'll get to check out some of the books. Meet Edna. It's gonna be fun for everybody. Oh, good! I've been always wanting to go there. Oh, I really gotta get here at my things and, uh, don't worry, Starlight. I'll send you there, Express. Boo! <sighs> that was a nice coincidence. The door in the firewall opened up with a loud creak. All eyes turned down and looked around towards the table towards it. Over the threshold stood the answer unicorn herself, 
her head held low and her damp cane trailing behind. Tiger instinctively bounded over to her. Trixie! There you are! I... She broke off and slowed down as she got nearer to Trixie, only just taking into details. The showman was looking decidedly less than great and powerful, with her untidy hair to a ruffled coat. Faint wisps of steam still rose from her back, a telltale of a heat spell that she must have used to dry herself. And most prominently of all, she did not look happy. Are you alright? Twilight asked, biting her lip as she waited for the answer. Tracy glared at the ground to Twilight's sigh. What do you think? Finding a response, Twilight lowered her head to meet Trixie's eye with a sympathetic look. Oh, Trixie, it's not your fault. That could have happened to any pony. Really? Did any pony else fall off the pillar? Tracy grumbled. Twilight pursed her lips. That's what I thought, said Trixie, her shower glare deepening. But it's not your fault, Twilight repeated. Really, it was just bad luck. I thought you were amazing. There's a short pause before Trixie chanced to look up at her. You saw me. We had a screen, Twilight explained. So yes, I saw the whole thing. And you really did look brilliant. <laughs> Trixie grunted, I still lost. So he glanced over into the table, then back at Twilight. What about you? Did you beat him? Yes, said Twilight timidly. Then I paused, though this one was eerily long. Twilight wondered whether or not there, that was the wrong answer. Despite her best guess of being, Trixie would be happy to hear that Flair lost. Maybe she would prefer to see and Twilight had both lost together. Long as Trixie blinked, well, good, I guess, she muttered emotionally, before turning her eyes to the table. I'm gonna get some pie. Well, that. So Yambo passed his head for the table. Twilight opened her mouth, but she ended up simply watching as Trixie fixed on one of the tables with a firm glare. Until they first to avert her eyes. Flair was the only one she couldn't scare off, so his mercifully subdued smirk followed her all the way to her place, not far from where Twilight had been sitting. She doesn't seem that upset, Twilight mused optimistically, as Trixie pulled a plate of apple pie towards her. Maybe I should let her have some pie for now, cheer her up later. Across the room, the lift touched down and Cherry Blossom hopped from the platform. Like her partner, she stayed silent, but she did flash a wide, shining smile as she skipped over to take a place beside him. Tully been expecting Trixie to throw a new arrival a dirty look, or at least a glare to Mazda as he had been given the others, but she did no such thing. She levitated a slice of pie up to her lips and took a chair of spite. This is Twilight made to join her, the door opened again, this time with such force that it gradually slammed to the wall. A small, spiky-haired stallion from before tried to say what was wide gray on his face. Oh my, Celestia! That was so awesome! I didn't even know where to start! He said excitedly. Seriously, best performance I've seen since that Chimera thing. You all did obviously. Oh, and, uh, Truff Bay Tixie. Give the showman a sympathetic look. So he snarled at him. So anyways, he continued, let's get right down to business this time. I mean, I could talk to you guys for hours if I didn't have a job to do. Oh, and right. Okay. So the next event's gonna be a bit different, and you've got a whole day tomorrow to prepare for it. Tony raised an eyebrow in earnest, and a couple of others murmured to each other. I've got a letter here for each pair, with details on the next event. He reached to his saddlebag and pulled out five envelopes and tossed them to the end of the table. Make sure you read them ASAP, so you give yourself enough time to prepare. Well, I mean, you don't have to prepare. You can always just chill out if you're confident enough. Is there some reason you can't just tell us what the effect is, like before? Said Trixie. No pony told me what it is, said the stallion on shrug. Apparently, it's on a need-to-know basis. I don't even need to know. And I think they just think I'm a glorified messenger, which I am, kind of. But hey, I'm not complaining. Trixie rolled her eyes and took another bite of her pie. Anyway, you got your letters. You can all feel free to leave whenever you want. He said, looking around at them all. They've opened up a tunnel in the arena wall, so you can walk straight out. There's chariots outside to take you wherever you want to go. Or you can walk. It's a nice enough day. At that, Violet and Nice grabbed their lair and started towards the exit. I was eager to get outside. Flair and Rose looked down one another, sincerely made to follow them. Twilight looked at her partner. The Azure Unicorn was still only halfway through her slice of pie. Twilight didn't like to interrupt her. There really was no need to rush anyway. Already having eaten much of a bowl of salad herself, Twilight tried down the length of the table to collect her letter, finding herself quite curious as to what the next event entailed. 
Fred was there. Once Ray stood to the roses, he passed her the lair. When he finished, she nodded and gave his neck a quick nestle. They turned towards to track the exit. Flair himself didn't move. He simply flashed a smile in the direction. Under mayor glanced unconsciously before returning it. Kind of cluck a dagger, huh? She joked timidly. Indeed. Twy gave a short chuckle. Raised her eyebrows and magically grasped the envelope addressed to herself and Trixie. It was a fairy way, only a single piece of paper. And Twilight knew about her writing materials. And Twilight knew her writing materials. Twilight, I wonder. He began in a hushed voice. That thing we talked about. Huh? Flair slowly nodded Trixie's direction. Uh oh, Twilight said. Right now? But I don't know. She's not in a very good mood. Hmm, I suppose. We weren't exactly going to have many more opportunities, though. After the display, I'm sure she'll be out of Manhattan like a flash to get away from me. I guess that's true, said Twilight, buying her love and consideration. What do you want, Flair? Keep Tracy's voice from behind. Twilight gave a start, turned her head to watch Tracy alongside, so I'd be pie crust from a little bit of a napkin. In a moment's pause, he lowered her to reveal a smirk. Still can't accept that my partner beat you, she teased. On the contrary, said Flair, casting a look at Twilight. I was actually just trying to hurry no good to get my offer with Twilight. Tracy blinked, decreased the brows suspiciously. Let offer. Where are so you already have plans for lunch forever? I thought I might ask you both to join Rose and I for dinner instead. He said slyly. Tracy rolled her eyes. Oh please, don't you ever give up? Twycon there so glare from Flair. She curled her lip in thought. For a second there was no harm in trying, right? Um, actually yeah, I thought it sounded like a good idea, said Twilight, offering Tracy a smile. A dark, awkward silence fell over the three of them as the words were processed. Tracy drew a look of our display of disbelief. What? Well, you say you haven't seen each other in a long time. Don't you think it might be worth taking some time to catch up? Said Twilight. Flair offered an appreciative smile, spurring her on. I mean, you might not get to see each other for a long time after this. No, said Tracy bluntly. Her eyes quite glaring, but certainly not pleased. Twilight made a faint smile. Okay, you don't have to if you don't want to. I was just trying to- I SAID FORGET IT! Tracy broke in, taking Twilight by surprise. Now she was glaring. If you want to call up to the enemy, that's fine. It's your decision, but don't drag me into it! Twilight's mouth fell open as a smith as Tracy blew an angry puff of hair through her nose. I- I'm going back to the hotel! Tracy declared, spinning in place and stomping out towards the door. She left a, a deadly, stunned silence in her wake. Twice stammered wormously, trying to make sense of what has thus happened. Tracy hadn't yelled at her like that since the first time she returned to Plainville. This was a different time, though. Twilight was stunned, not with shock or with fear per se. It was more like dread, panic. Say to yourself, Twilight looked to Flair, who looked at us if he wasn't sure how to feel. I I'm sorry! She stammered out, before turning to dash at her partner. Tracy, wait! 